Hi, this is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoe Space. Today for Shoe Talks Quarantine Edition, um, I'm inviting Jack the Ripper from up in Calgary, Canada. Um, I met him at an event, an Adidas event, um, back maybe two years ago. Um, and since I've been following him, but he was offline for a while and he came back on Instagram just recently. So, um, I invited him. Let's see if he is on. Let me just see. Nope, not yet. All right. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Okay, he's not here yet. If there's any question that you might have, let me know. Hi. Oh, he's here. Okay. Hi, Anthony. Hi. Hey, what's up? Hi, how are you? It's been a long time. I know, it's been a while. How are you doing, Keiko? Good. Are you in New York right now? Are you back home? No, yeah, I'm in Canada. I got kicked out. Oh, when did you get back? <laughs> uh, I got back. Uh, it was a whole crazy thing because uh, I was in New York working. Uh-huh. And then every day was just kind of getting worse and worse. And then uh, our prime minister, uh, Justin Trudeau, got on and was like, we're closing the border. Right. So come back now or never yeah. kind of thing. He pretty much worded yeah. it like, uh, we strongly recommend any Canadians abroad to come back while you still can. And I was like, okay, buy right. a ticket now. Okay. Yeah, and pretty much got out like the next day. Wow. Was that in March? Uh, yeah, like I think it was March 16th. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The lockdown, I think, started, but yeah, then, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So have you been like working from home or yeah. what's your situation? Do you feel health-wise, you're good? Yeah, yeah, I'm really good. And it's uh, uh, not to flex, but free health care out here. So it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so jealous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but it's nice. Like I think uh, Canada, we don't have as many cases. I think there's like 500 active cases last I checked in in my city. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So. It's nice. Yeah. And how's so, things out there? Uh, I'm actually upstate, so I I'm, nice. I'm a little bit away from the city. I miss it, but at the same time, you know, it's it's okay. I'm good where I am right now. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, so for people who don't know, can we introduce you? So you're Jack the Ripper. Yep. We're not, we're not going to reveal what the J stands for, I guess. Um, <laughs> and oh, someone else says, only if haircuts were included in healthcare. <laughs> if wow. only, yeah, Jonathan, yeah. <laughs> um, What's up? <laughs> so tell us how you got into sneakers and what you do um, now. And yeah where you it's, started it's kind of like a long story like uh, yeah, and i please. think it's like goes Dive into in. uh where i'm from like if okay. you don't know where i'm from i'm from calgary alberta it's uh okay. a redneck uh state per se of, of uh canada uh-huh um it's an oil town uh-huh uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of how i could describe it it's a it's like a big city but it's an oil yeah. town so it's like almost like very small town mentality there okay uh, it's not very cool, but it's very comfortable to live here. Okay. Um, and so, uh, like, because of that, like, growing up here, I was always looking at places like Los Angeles, New York, uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. Japan, like, Berlin, uh -huh. everywhere else. Uh -huh. And so, at, like, a very young age, I was always, like, you know, had my ear to the ground. Like, I knew about all these, like, alt kids, like Ian Connor and, like, these guys from, kids, like, from New York, like, Ass Pizza. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, I was just, I just always felt like I was in different cities because like, that's what you had to do being like a creative from like, kind of like a small town. Um, yeah. and so I was always looking at new things. And I remember, um, in high school, my friend uh -huh. introduced me to, uh, Nike SBs. Uh -huh. And that was like the inception of like what yeah. got me into, um, sneakers in general, because mm -hmm. it was like the first time I ever saw sneakers as, or like footwear in general as anything more than uh 
just footwear it's like yeah it's also just like an art medium yeah and uh and that kind of like bled into like me doing like a bunch of research and then I got like heavy into um people might know this like Nike talk uh-huh. uh like the hype beast form ISS um all of those and uh like Kanye to the all of those and like it, it like introduced me to like all these different artists around the world like Jeff uh-huh. Staple was one of the OGs yep. growing up uh-huh. uh, a New York local um, yeah uh, just mostly from like New York but like guys who would always be going to New York as well like like Nigo mm-hmm. um, and every other Japanese brand out there would, that like, would be like Yoji uh, yeah there's um, Ray Kawakubo of like uh, Comme des Garçons yeah um yeah, there's just so, like too many to list off. Yeah. So were you always collecting at the time? Like in high school? I mean, so you got into so it. Did you, I got were you into ever into it. sports? Or did you wear that, that them? Was, or more was like... A, one of the things was that like, I, I grew up really poor. Uh-huh. And so I always just like appreciated these things. And it was like, you know, there was never a point when I could like go to Foot Locker and, right. you know, how could I ask my, my parents for like, oh, I like this shoe. It's like 600 bucks. Oh my god. Uh, so I never asked I never asked my parents for it. so what I would do right. is like how I got into this was like having like that interest for streetwear art yep. and like uh footwear I would buy these like Nike dunks that were like uh-huh. about 100 bucks from Foot Locker. Uh-huh. And for me growing up like really poor I was like why what's the difference between this dunk and like yep. the Nike, the Nike SB uh, Paris Dunks. Yes. Which are just like this, more or less the same model, but uh, yeah, um, like twenty thousand, maybe even more now. Uh, they're probably forty thousand oh dollar difference. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But it's just yeah. the same model. So then, what I would do initially was like I would buy these like eighty, ninety dollar shoes and then turn them into like copy, turn them into something else, and that kind of like led into like learning um, how to paint shoes and like at the time. Okay. That's when I got into like learning about like customizers. Yes. And uh, like, who is it? Like, I got to shout out uh, C two Customs. Um, C two. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Chris Hui. He he actually works at Adidas now. Um, uh huh. And we just connected recently. Yeah. Um, but uh, I remember finding him. He was like the first customizer that like r- really showed me that like customs don't have to like look like customs. They look like, right. like straight off the shelves. Ah. Uh, there's guys like that and then um you know mark ong of uh-huh. uh sbtg uh-huh. he's in uh i think singapore uh-huh um and then there's another guy called uh meth amphibian i do believe that's like two guys it was like uh-huh uh that was uh i don't know if i know that one yeah um i'm writing, then, I'm writing it down sorry uh-huh and then there was uh jbf so big yeah. shout to him a mutual yeah. friend yeah uh, um, who I uh, got to know recently over the last like two years, and uh, we kind of like clicked, and we're we're we're, we're pretty chill now. <laughs> yeah, good, good. But good. But those guys like kind of like, inspired me to like start like looking at shoes that way, and like I kind of, you know, I was always like I, I grew up as an art kid because like my family um, it runs in the blood. I guess my grandpa yeah. is uh, extremely artistic, but uh, uh, I don't know if you share this, but like being Asian and coming from like, especially coming from war in Vietnam, yeah. like the family's like, you don't, you don't fucking do art. You have to like contribute yeah. to society. Uh, and yeah. so that was like really repressed in my family. So mm. it was like hard kind of getting in and like learning and actually just being a creative, like, cause like I was pushed to do engineering, right? Uh, computer science. So I have like a, a wide background sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, and uh, was this all in, all through high school or and into college you were doing this like painting and making yeah so mm-hmm, I just learned how to do it in junior year of a high school and then mm-hmm. it kind of like fizzled out because I think in high school you're very like uh, I'm gonna go hang out with my friends I'm gonna go play yeah. football yeah do this whatever go like party with my friends yeah yeah and so I kind of dropped it but then I learned how to like take apart shoes and, and mm-hmm. like put them back together mm-hmm. and um I kind of like left it for a couple of years and then like a few years down the road, I was like really bored. Uh, we we're at my ex's place at the time and she was like a manager of uh, champs. So, so it's like, uh, it would be like foot action. It's a parent company. They have like kitty inversions, uh, champs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And she is like the manager there. So she had uh, a bunch of shoes. 
Yeah. I was like, let's let's Great. customize let's shoes. Try. I know how to do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, kind of like got back into it. Then like one day we were really bored. And I was like, yo, I can take apart shoes and put them back together. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, like I just like got this like burning passion. I just would go to sleep and I was like thinking about like, yo, the next one's gonna have like purple stitching, uh -huh. and I'm gonna use this. And uh, I kind of just saw right there that like. I had a, a deep passion for what I do. Yeah. Where did you, like, you you just knew how to do it? Did you reverse engineer the shoe? Did you yeah, have a I sewing think it's experience? Like that, did you that have was a like, sewing machine? Like, I'm curious. Sorry, I'm going uh, to no, no, detail. No. But we, we should. You kind of skip, skipped it. You, wait, <laughs> did you already have a sewing machine at home? Yeah, so I, I learned how to sew myself because um, I used to ask, like, my parents, or my mom to like tailor my clothes and do this. And I had all mm -hmm. these crazy ideas, but like, you know, she was always busy working. So I ended up like asking her like uh, really young, I think like somewhere in junior middle school, I guess. Wow. Um, cool. Like how to teach me how to use a sewing machine. I could just do it yeah. myself. Uh -huh. And then from there kind of like, like crack it, like fed my addiction. I would always like buy yeah. something and like fix this about it. And then that kind of like, bred me to always like look at things and go like how would I how would I do yeah. this differently and it's like yeah. the same that same mentality is like what I have now with uh, yeah. what I do it's like everything I look at whether that be shoes or apparel or mm. just art or the design mm. of like a car yeah uh, like this is what I would do differently and this is how mm. I would do it yeah mm. Mm, mm, mm. and then so what's the favorite or or actually how did that from there from high school to college and then um, how did you sell it? Did you sell it to friends? Was there social media back then? Uh, it just Already? started. Yeah. It just okay. started sort of. Like Facebook or Instagram? Uh, Inst no, no, no. Like Facebook was like when I was in high school, but then okay. Instagram was already like off for about like two years. Okay. Um, and so then I just started posting a little bit on Instagram. And funny enough, like coming from a small town like Calgary, I was like, yeah uh there how do i say this there's like a lot of people trying to do it out here and it it, it, can, it can be very corny sometimes and saturated and so like i felt very uh ashamed almost of what i did what? yeah what why huh. because okay. like you know i'm in a business professional city an oil town so if you don't right. work that usually you're uh you know a waste man as they say <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> which is opposite, which is really interesting because being in New York, like being a designer yeah. is like almost it's like the like, excess. Yeah. Uh, there's so many designers of any, all sorts, whereas yeah. here it's like, um, there are none. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. At all. Um, yeah, so. It, so you felt like, what's it called when, um, like a, like a whack-a-mole, but like you felt like you were like sticking out a little bit? Yeah, and like the, the, this place doesn't uh, do you like it doesn't do you any favors when you really stick out like that. Oh, okay. Um, so like for me, like getting into it, I, I like I was ashamed, so I uh, I actually didn't tell my friends. Oh. I was doing this until I was like, because in my head, like I had that expectation. I was like, okay, I actually have to be making it a little bit. So mm. I didn't tell them. I think that until I was about like one thousand to four thousand followers when I was like, okay, it's it's, it's going somewhere at least that I was like finally was like hey guys uh you know i'm doing this thing and and like, on the I'm, side I'm, were you yeah. doing it on the side yeah for mm -hmm. the longest time i actually considered I, I that's how i referred to it everyone was like yo what are you doing these days and i'd be like uh uh oh uh i'm in school or i'm at this job but uh i have to I do this thing on the side it's just a hobby though that's what i said it's just a uh... hobby <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's funny. Like I was like a little ashamed of it at first, but uh, ah. I've 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 learned to like embrace Love it. it. Embrace yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, but then let's go forward a little bit. How long have you been doing it for now? So now I don't really know your age. So, <laughs> um, I'm 27. I've probably been doing it for five years now. Yeah. So not too long. Nothing too crazy. But I think yeah. I think like I've always been an artist ever since yeah. birth. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think yeah. it's been like a lifelong journey. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you do want to keep your home base, your hometown. You feel like you you don't feel like you need to move anywhere. What uh, do you feel? Well, I've I've always lived here, and mm -hmm. I think that's a bit of like a uh, a problem in a sense, like because I I find a lot of people 
uh, if you know people from Calgary, they tend to be like, Jesus, yeah, Calgary. Oof. Really? <laughs> they, they, they're like kind of trying to get out of there. Uh, oh. Or out of here. Sorry, I'm saying that like I'm not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oh. um, I, I always kind of felt that way growing up because I was just like, oh, I want to live in L.A. I want to live in New York City and be with like other creatives and Creative. artists. And um, I guess like last year, I, um, Adidas hit me up and they're like, do you want to come work for us at the Brooklyn location? Um, right. And I've been doing work with them in the past and like Adidas Canada as well as like companies like Foot Action. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, of course, like this is my dream job and I yeah. got to live in New York. And uh, getting to experience like, you know, going anywhere and meeting designers, this guy's doing this and I got to meet this person who's like doing this, getting to meet yeah. you and everyone, all the students and the people who yeah. roll through. Yeah. Um, kind of like opened my eyes to like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be in Calgary. <laughs> uh, but like at the same time too, like I, I feel like I have like a bit of a, an obligation to the city because like mm -hmm. um, one thing I've noticed growing up was that uh, anyone who's cool in Calgary, they leave and they go to like Montreal at least or Toronto. Uh -huh. uh, I remember a lot of like these indie bands. I was I, I really liked growing up like on their MySpace or whatever. They would like mm -hmm. initially go getting up. They they have like Calgary, Alberta in their uh, as a location yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But then they would change it when they got a little bigger to say Montreal. And I, I would always be like, oh, that sucks. Aww. But like I understand. <laughs> right. Um, well, but you can be representing. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. like what I'm kind of like in right now where I'm like, uh, I think that somebody in Calgary who has like a little bit of clout um, needs to like stay here and set things up. And there's like people really trying to do things here. But uh, um, I think like I can help like, you know, absolutely take, take it from being like a subculture here and turning it to like something that's a like, part of like everyone's every day. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. Um what was I going to ask? So wh who would you say your mentors were? Or did you kind of learn on your own and you kind of created like your own style as you went? Yeah, I, well, I'll say this. I think everybody initially mm -hmm. was was just inspired by JBF. You know, he was doing the back then he was doing he was like the pioneer of the all Python Jordan ones. Yeah. And I think everybody was like, oh, I want to do that, too. Um, yeah. So I think I remember coming in wanting to do that, but like a little bit more as well. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I'm like completely self-taught, especially like five years ago, there was like no resources. I find like, with, especially with um, reconning, there's yeah. a lot more resources now. You could go online and look up yeah. like this and this and this and somebody's posting this about shoemaking. Yeah. Where shoemaking back then is like, kind of like it was a protected uh, secret. <laughs> Um, and I, and I kind of experienced that going around to other like cobblers around Calgary. I remember asking them like, Hey, could you like, could I intern? Um, uh, or could I pay you for this? And I remember they, uh, they did not like me. <laughs> right, right, right. No, it's the same. And I think cobblers, especially it's a little different yeah. trade, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're, but it's they're... weird. Cause it, it, I think it comes from like, you know, where you take on a, uh, an apprentice. That's like the way yeah. the trade used to work. I yeah. think, but I think nowadays with how competitive like capitalism is, uh, right. I think a cobbler shoemaker kind of like looks at other cobbler shoemakers as like competition. Competition. Hmm. Yeah, but it's right. uh, so it's funny. Yeah, but I think like nowadays, like uh, seeing like so many people out there doing these classes or learning for themselves. Yeah. Um, I think it's awesome because it just like bolsters the community yeah. when there there really hasn't been a community. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um. Would you ever have like an apprentice or like somebody come to you if someone came to you in Calgary? Would you teach them? Uh, yeah, I'm currently at a home setup, so it's like not the best. <laughs> it's like like there's a little bit here. I have some in the garage and some in the basement, so I do a whole lot of stairmaster all day, essentially. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> um, well, that's good but, to keep yourself like stay yeah, I, stay <laughs> active. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I do I do want to get like a commercial spot because I'm uh, outgrowing my britches here. Uh -huh. uh, s some machines are bleeding into like my living area and I'm like Ooh. it's good to have a separation, separation. of uh, of uh, yeah. work and uh, home yeah. which I mean I mean that's a privilege here in Calgary we have the space uh, to do that yeah uh, I know in like New York uh, you know you're probably just going to be doing both <laughs> at the exact same time 
<laughs> yes, you saw how small. I mean, like even the shoe space is pretty small. I think. Yeah. But um, it's yeah, a humble it spot. Was... I, I I quite liked it. It uh, it's formatted perfectly. You had the downstairs for the gluing, and and upstairs is more like the uh, the open the, space right. tables, the sewing. Yeah, right. it's kind of similar here. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you think you can give us a little bit of a tour or like? I have this thing mounted. Uh, what I'm you see here else. is more or less like oh, okay. what it is up here. It's just like a kind of like a working table. Okay. Um, okay. What are I you have working like, on? Mm -hmm. I have a few different projects. Yeah. Uh, stuff you... I can't really show right now. Oh, but, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that Nike in the back, like one of your current projects? Uh, they're actually a personal pair of shoes. I haven't even posted those yet. Uh, okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm okay with showing those. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're just like, a, actually, they're, there's a New York artist called Eric Hayes. Okay. And he had a dunk. Uh, mm. called like the Hayes Dunks and uh -huh. uh, these are just like a pair of Jordan ones that uh, mm -mm. I uh, made for myself that are inspired cool. by that I guess cool but yeah I've Did... been uh, doing a lot of stuff with Adidas over the last year uh, uh -huh. sort of the reason why I kind of like took a break from Instagram uh -huh. and then uh, I've been How, how'd that feel like one one year almost yeah like just offline did you uh, it was feel nice. liberated? It was nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's like exactly why I did it for the for the freedom. Um, I think uh, social media kind of like puts you in that box and that mindset of like the rat race of just like trying to play the algorithm and yeah. be number one and right. and they really reward you with the algorithm by like posting constantly. So then I always felt yeah. really, really, really shitty when like a post would get like. 500 likes less or like a thousand likes less and like you know i would like be rewarded so much by posting often and then uh i'd take a break and then post something and then i'd feel like shit because it didn't do good and i, I don't think that's like good posting something and then tying your happiness to like the amount of likes or whatever right you have. right 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 but like yeah everybody i'm sure worried like what's going yeah, on yeah yeah right? but I, I made sure i made sure to like you know not leave any loose ends or like clients waiting i yeah. finished all my projects and then i just like mm -hmm. left um but uh yeah i didn't like put up a post i'm not like huge into instagram or social media at all like i think i think if i didn't have this i probably wouldn't have instagram at all actually wow wow yeah. <laughs> okay yeah yeah no it, it makes sense but i like how your feed is like so clean it just shows your work you know like the fi final uh, yeah work I, i've yeah. always been about presentation and i think uh how something looks is uh really important it's key it's uh yeah, yeah, yeah. like a little bit of my marketing past like everything has to be presentable and good yeah what do you get inspired by or who do you get inspired by uh i, I like and, and this is such a cop-out answer but like everything and i everything, think that's one yeah. thing that being from um like calgary has helped me with is that uh i'm actually just not really inspired by footwear at all um okay. i'm just ins i just i, I want to be able to look at like like nature and find like inspiration from that or architecture or yeah. uh, motorsports or any other things that yeah. might be interested Anything. in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, I think when you like design in like with just footwear in mind, it could like that, that creative space can tend to be like very cyclical and they just, you just yeah. see the same things again. And yeah. so it's like nice to have like different perspectives and like be inspired by like ice cream yeah. or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I love, like, I love your take on a lot of things. Like there was like an Asian inspired one and, do you when clients come to you for example like some of the shoes on your instagram do they come to you with like an idea in mind or do yeah you a, a kind lot of them a, a lot of them do them? and uh for the most part it's like they they, they they'll have this general idea mm -hmm. and then it'll like i guess my expertise is like being able to throw your idea at and then i like turn it into something very feasible and like very nice i guess yeah oh very cool and then do you also do some creative projects where you're just doing it out of your own creation like and then yeah 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 someone uh, someone sometimes. would just buy it off of you yeah uh i do a little bit of everything so it's like uh most of my stuff is like private orders where somebody contacts okay. me yeah uh, but sometimes like those clients are just like yo like um i like this here's just the theme 
It's like yeah. maybe like might be just one thing and like just do whatever you want with it and just don't use like white or don't use like purple. Yeah. And so okay. like that's like I do all of that and um I'm I'm starting to do it a little bit more uh-huh. now. Um I think that expectation of like Instagram before kind of like made me like chase the clients and chase like this but now I'm like going back to my roots of just like doing what I like first. Yeah. Yeah. And then um I think everything else is a, a little bit secondary. Yeah. And things follow when you do that. It seems like like when you do what you like like the people who like those things come and follow you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The, yeah. When you set oh. the precedence that like, you know, you're just kind of like chasing the hype train yeah. and you kind of fall into what I did where like I just I just saw likes and all that, but now, mm. you know, slow it down. And at the end of the day, like as an artist, you just want to be able to like put what you do out there and uh, mm-hmm. if people don't like it, it's like then whatever. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> what are the fa- what's the most favorite sneaker that you decon recon? Re- um, re- any in the past yeah also cop out answer i feel like but like i think every single one <laughs> yeah um yeah. yeah i put my heart and soul into like every single project i uh, when oh, it good. leaves my workshop like i want it to be like at least like the lens at which i see uh-huh. all of this in is that like if i personally don't like it or wouldn't wear it then uh, yeah. why would anyone else right. uh, and and uh, i've learned to really trust my uh, my instincts and like yeah. my vision so Yeah. I just roll with that. Oh, that's cool. What if or have you ever had a moment when you're like, okay, it's not going the way I want it to? What um, do you do? What do you do? Do you redo it or do you Yeah. Yeah, you do? 100%. You... I I I'm big about that, especially because of reconning. It's it's like starting from a clean slate. Yeah. So at any point, um I'll 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 start over from the beginning. Actually, just a project I just finished recently for a local um I was like pretty much near the end and then I I I gave it a old good look over and I was like nah. and I just no. started from scratch and that's the good oh thing about God. recon is that you can just yeah. start from scratch and and that's the thing is like I'm I'm a big perfectionist and right like it has to be exactly like if fit into like my vision or it's just not uh-huh. good And then can I ask you if you also make the patterns basically do you yeah. decon- do you deconstruct make the patterns you already have a set of patterns for each style now by now or do you kind of do it each time Yeah more or less like before I used to do the the old school customizer style of like when I get the size in then I have the pattern for that size but then um ever since working at Adidas I've I've learned to do a little bit more like official Okay. And um <laughs> like I learned like pattern like pro- a little bit of proper pattern making so then what I just did was like I got you know I have like the pattern of a Jordan 1 and then yeah. in like a size 9 uh yeah. and I throw that all on the computer perfect yeah. it uh, make it like symmetrical and then um I grade it for every mm-hmm. single size so then I did I've done the same thing now over the that's the the first thing I did in, in uh in the in the quarantine actually was like I went back and I just uh perfected all the all my patterns and then um mm-hmm. or perfected it for now like, I'll, i'll probably be unhappy in a bit <laughs> but like digitized digitized it and like mm-hmm. just pre- prepared it so that mm-hmm. you, you don't you can use it when yeah. there's an order that comes for different sizes yeah 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 i just i have a i have a plotter and so i yeah. just oh. I, i just i have it like uh my illustrator uh is compatible with it so then i yeah. just throw all the files in there and then i just uh-huh. uh, i have everything pre-cut so it's all good to go Oh, that's yeah. so great. Yeah. Sometimes so I, I like, I, uh, I look at a shoe and I can kind of pattern it from just looking at it. Wow. Um, it was something, especially coming from Calgary, like I don't have access to any shoes first. Uh, right. We don't have a lot of stores here who have, or uh, like, who have like great Nike accounts who like will right. get like a, a Yeezy first time. So then I would have to like look at like compile these pictures from Complex and High Snobody yeah. and High Beast and like. Yeah. Try to get the proportions right and uh yeah, uh-huh. it's like something like my background I'm like I can reverse engineer things very well. Yeah. Well, that comes in handy. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I know you said that you can't show us around but can you kind of give us like like a list of what machines you have? Like you just um, said you have a plotter. That's like is it kind of big or is it one of the Yeah, um... it's a, it's like maybe uh four feet by a foot uh wow. that's in my garage um, uh-huh 
And then I have a small one just right, uh, you can probably see it right here. It's uh -huh. like a, it's just like a silhouette. Uh -huh. It's like okay for doing like, like a small stuff. I guess the detail is not the best, uh, but the plot is really a, a big ditch to get set up. Uh, yeah. So I have to plan like quite ahead, but this one's good for like, Simple, like a, stencil, a stencil I need to do uh, or something oh, like okay. that. Is, yeah, um, like, yeah, like a crafter's um, kind of like the, uh, what's it called, Cree cut? Is it kind of yeah, like yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It's like, it's like a, it's like a Joanne fabric type machine. Yeah. It's, it's nothing yeah, yeah, too yeah. crazy. Uh, oh, that's but cool, I, that's I do cool. have like a, uh two post beds uh -huh. um a zigzag um uh -huh. and then i have like a and my feet is like a home sewing machine that i kind of like whip out my my zigzag is a little too industrial so sometimes if i'm doing like apparel or uh um just like a thin material it'll fucking yeah. shred it up you know yeah 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 um so then, but then i have yeah. um a, apparel machines i just got last year uh -huh. i got like a juki um and those are just apparel specific only they they yeah. could not uh, do uh, heavyweight stuff. No. And then um, I also have uh, two sergers. Wow. Um, what do I, you I use them for? Apparel, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want to see your, I haven't seen your apparel. Yeah. Uh, I guess you'll see that's something I'm like doing behind the scenes. I, I, that, it was okay. like my background before footwear actually. So I have like uh, a knack for apparel production and like. Yeah, cool. I've, I've been making stuff on the low. <laughs> oh, very but, cool, very cool. Yeah, but it's just like, yeah, I have to, I have to like pivot my page slowly because if you just like, you know, kind of like tear that bandaid yeah. off, I think everyone's going to be a little bit like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. So and a then, slow so transition. Yeah, and then do you have any, you don't need any Skyvers. What else do you need? Um, uh, I have Skyver. It doesn't work very well. I need a new one. Um, uh-huh. I've just been hand skiving. That's just like uh -huh. my background. I've always been hand skiving, which sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it fucking blows. I hate it. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I, I've, I've cut myself so bad many times. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I do want to get a, a, a really nice post bed. After being Adidas, I'm like, oh, wow. These a get much bed? better. Oh, yeah. really? They have like a really nice global that's like automatic everything. Yeah. All um, right. But I also have a, a pretty big heat press, uh, uh -huh. kind of like a shitty laser engraver. Wow. Um, but I think the next machine I actually am going to get is um, um, an embroidery machine. I really need one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They're so expensive, though. I think they start at like five to six thousand. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Is it the digi digital one that you're just going to just put in the graphic mm -hmm. and just, uh, yeah. Yeah, it just, I, I think, especially for like customizers, it yeah. really sets you apart having like yeah. full embroidery. It just looks like a, a factory shear. Yeah. But yeah. I'm running out of space here. That's why I'm like kind of holding off on uh, buying too many machines because like uh -huh. my heat press is a little too beefy and it's uh, resetting my circuit breaker. Oh, each time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least like once a day. So it's like a little sketchy. So I'm, I'm not yeah. uh, using it too much right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, that's interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing. So, how's the retail like kind of space? Like, can you find commercial space like in your town like really easily? Uh, Is there like a area yeah, un that you want to be? Unfortunately, businesses don't do very well in Calgary because, again, if you're not like in the like industrial sector, oil and gas, then uh, uh -huh. then uh, you got to be looking elsewhere for clientele. Um, so there's so a lot of openings. Space, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm just waiting for like prices to sort of go down with Rona. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, why not? Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking at like a warehouse, a couple of different warehouse spaces because like uh -huh. something like I don't know, fifteen, eighteen hundred square feet. Whoa. Which yeah, is which is very big for for New York. Uh, I would say yeah. like massive for New York, but uh, yeah. Calgary is like that's probably on the smaller end. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Uh, location, <laughs> location. I mean, like it would be cool to have something central, like like central would be down or downtown of Calgary. Downtown? Okay. Um, like because I imagine like I, I want like my workshop to be like a almost like a hub for other yeah. artists to come through. Yeah. Like, I want, yeah. Um, Especially like having a, a place for like uh, artists and creatives in Calgary to go to. There's, yeah, we don't yeah. have anywhere like that. Don't, so. Really? Oh my goodness. Yeah, there, there's like not a there's place so for like artists to do. hang out. Yeah. Oh. Um, so you're going to, 
is that kind of like a goal of like workshop space but also a hangout space slash yeah gallery? i think that's like my my new goal after kind of like being inspired by new york and the lifestyle there mm -hmm. is that like mm -hmm. and feeling the obligation towards calgary is just like kind yeah. of setting up um like the infrastructure yeah. for um like Do artists it. and creatives because like yeah. they're, they're not very supported out here one thing that was really interesting was that like um i was given a tour of parsons by yeah. one of the students and yeah. uh i remember asking her just like what do you do with your degree after you're done and she was just like anything you can work at this company work at this company they like you know that means something parsons on your um mm. on your resume whereas yeah. here it's more like a, a trade school if you guys have that it's just like uh, you have your degree but what it just means is like oh i'm um i have pottery skills or i i know how to mm -hmm. i know how to be a jeweler uh but you don't have any work opportunities mm. they're just like thrust into the economy here which uh, you know as an artist like you'll 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 probably be homeless pretty soon you, it's probably your oh hobby uh, right. and you probably work at, somewhere else as a, as a, as right. a regular nine to five which like sucks right right yeah so i, I want to like sort mm -hmm. of like supply like like a place that people can go to and like, I guess like apprentice and intern and like learn how to do this, but also like, yes. um, at a certain point, like, Oh, I can hire you to do this because like, I'm, I'm hitting a level where I'm like, do I want to just be like an artist by myself doing things? Or do I want to like, kind of like be a creative director? I think that was the role that, that, that word's thrown around a bit much, but, uh, but <laughs> like that title and just kind of like doing a bunch of different things yeah, uh, and having people work for me. Yeah, and you have so many ideas, and it's not just footwear. Yeah, and you have, yeah, and the creating the community. I think you can totally do it. Wait, hold on. Costume alchemy. I think she actually met you. She was. Ah, uh, yeah, student. that's uh, that's come Kim. Come see us. Yes, Kim. Said, yeah. Come see us. I think she set up a shop somewhere yeah, near you. Yeah, she uh, she sent me a text and. Uh, yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, and ten, before ten. before Rona. Oh right. So, well, once it settles, it'll be great if you can visit 1010. Uh, how did you achieve the art on the Uncle Futura Jordan 1? Um, use this thing, actually. Um, cut. Uh, I got Futura art, and then I had, like, yeah. the Dunkel artwork, and then I put it on Photoshop and Illustrator, and I kind of worked it out to, like, the vector files. And yeah. then I just threw them all on here, and they, uh, I cut them out of vinyl, uh -huh. um, stuck it on leather that I prepared, and then I just uh, painted it over, so... Mm. Uh, yeah. Do you feel like that's the machine that you can't live up without, or is that like your favorite or essential tool? No, not really. I think uh, yeah. like I, I don't really like cricket or like silhouette. They're like okay, way too expensive for what they are, and they uh, yeah, they have like a huge premium. They don't even like their their user interface kind of sucks. Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> I just your, use it because it's your... like the only thing that was available kind of yeah that's time. not like a plotter that i have to like right open up and then put set in and set the settings as this yeah um yeah what's your favorite tool um i don't know <laughs> i don't know i i enjoy the process it's it's all mm -hmm. kind of like cathartic you know it's a bit relaxing doing every part of it even the mundane stuff even the hand skiving that kind of sucks it's just a part of the process. Uh, right. Yeah. I think right now I've been really enjoying the heat press and laser engraver, um, uh, especially yeah. being from like uh, coming from like Adidas and learning that like, you know, like if you look at a lot of Nike and Adidas shoes, the performance shoes, like they're no sew. Yeah. Like a lot of the panels are just essentially they have like a heat, um, a, like a hot melt layer yeah. and they yeah. just like press it all together and the shoe's done. And I've been, uh, yeah. kind of been experimenting with that lately. Uh -huh. I think that's a cool thing because like shoemakers, tend to just use leather, which is a, yes. the perfect material to work with, you know, but uh, kind of like making, especially for me, like making a shoe look like it's off the shelf, almost like a collab, um, yeah. using different materials like knits um, yeah. and like meshes and nylons, um, I think uh, is super awesome. It's kind of funny because this is like almost like less premium, but it's like other customizers look at it and like, how how'd you get that material? Right, <laughs> right, right, right. It's fun. It looks fun. So you, would you say your favorite material to work with is some of the meshes? Or what's your favorite? Uh, no, leather Leather still. It's just like such a great material. It has stretch. It can not yeah. stretch if you want. 
if you back it with something, it could be like have these properties. Uh, you can water form it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can mold it even if you have like a a vacuum former even you know yeah. and have like a texture you can do that mm -hmm. and then you can uh you can laser it uh really well as well mm -hmm. um yeah it's just kind of like the perfect material <laughs> yeah 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 no, absolutely how many pairs do you work on at a time is it like one order at a time and you have like a long wait list or do you um it depends sometimes mm -hmm. um if a project is really involved uh then i'll just like work on it and that's it but uh usually i'll juggle anywhere from four to twelve pairs a month that's uh something like that yeah um yeah. sometimes more if, if it's like a release i do yeah. uh, where it's like an idea then i just like sell that instead of like a private order then i i could go anywhere from like three to like 30. wow that's a lot <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a workhorse. Yeah, it goes That's into the, amazing. the the Asian stereotype, uh, <laughs> child labor, ex child labor, right I here. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's the? Oh, somebody asks some questions. Hold on. Ooh, um, factory laces. Jay, what you got behind the table behind you? That was the shoes. Which one? I'll show it again. This one? Yeah. Or is uh, it the other side? It's just. Oh, uh, Hayes, yeah. uh, Hayes Jordan ones. Mm -hmm. All right. I haven't even, I haven't posted these yet. They're just personal. I actually don't know if I'm going to post these. I kind of want to redo them. So okay. I might take them apart again. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Then, I'm, I'm not opposed to doing that if it's not like right. exactly what I want it to be. Right. Uh, do you always wear your creations? Uh, no, actually for the longest time, I just didn't have uh -huh. enough time to. Because I was like, yeah, with the time here, I could just make someone else's shoes. Oh, what's right. up, Arvindu? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? Okay. Oh, there's a few people I from Calgary to... here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah. What's the first custom you did? And then there's uh, Anthony, I meet uh, NYC, says, let's talk about the off-white 11s. What about them? What they were fun. Them? They were fun. They were yeah. cool. They, uh, I, I quite like those. They were super, super, super involved. Because mm. like, it's like what I like to do, but I, I don't always tend to do because it's a bit expensive is like, actually fully designing a shoe. Because like, mm. uh, it's not cheap to get a custom shoe uh, made. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then on top of that, it's like, if you like, if you want me to custom design something like hit the sketchbook and design it, pa repattern it and all this stuff like that, it's gonna co like cost probably double. So not right. too many people uh, want to do that or have the means to do that. So then I, uh, here and there, I'll, I'll just like kind of have that as a free thing. Um, mm. You just pay for the custom and I'll do that. And uh, it was one of those where like the idea was put on the table of like, here's a Jordan 11. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I also like uh, off-white. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, that's a good scope to work with. And I kind of like thought of um, the original, the 10, yeah. off-white nikes and then i yeah. uh thought what if there was the 11th and i thought it was like very apropos being a jordan 11 yeah um and they wanted to keep it a low so i was like i think that's cool and interesting um and oh. i kind of tried to do a bunch of different stuff uh yeah. those were interesting because they i used um a uh, pvc yeah uh it, it's actually like... uh mm -hmm. it's actually you know like the curtains of like a, a butcher shop Yep. You know, you walk into and they... Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, the plastic, it, it, yeah. It's a super thick, and I yeah. used that material, and what I did mm -hmm. was I uh, I hit it with, uh, I think, 400 grit sandpaper on both sides to give it, like, okay. the milky look, because it was just yeah. transparent. Opaque, yeah, yeah. So I gave it, yeah, just a slightly translucent look, and then I um, I uh, I, la I pre-lasted it because it was so tough. Yeah, uh, it's thick, so it's with, really... Uh, yeah. With extreme heat. Oh, okay. uh, with a, yeah, if you heat it up, then you could kind of form it to stuff. Mold and uh, yeah. And so I just preheated it like crazy. Then I like pulled it over a last almost like a uh, one piece uh, dress shoe. Uh -huh. Like, and then I and then I clipped the excess off and into the, the Jordan 11 pattern. Um, wow. And then I, so that part was like pre lasted in a sense, and I kind of just put it on afterwards. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, that one was a lot of like sit down and design and rehearse and do this redo it again. Uh, and uh, it, it's tough because you can like with design, you can go too far sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, or sometimes go not not far enough. And I think both are just equally as bad. 
And so trying to find the minimum, but th I think I hit like a nice sweet spot with those that were like, yeah, just doing enough. But uh, what yeah. I liked about those was that like, uh, a lot of people liked them and a lot of people hated them. And I think that's like where an artist is it's doing good. a good job. Yeah, good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you um, personally liked it. Yeah, yeah I quite liked them liked a bit. It. And uh, yeah. I guess I, like, this doesn't that, like really matter that much to an artist, but I don't think, but uh, Virgil himself was like uh, commenting on it. Was, oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, it was a bit of a bona fide. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, do you always say if you have a client and you're kind of bouncing ideas or um, do you sketch and show them or do you kind of do and show like a physical? Um, if it's like a full designed up, then yeah, I'll mm -hmm. sketch it first and I'll show the sketches mm -hmm. and then I'll throw the sketches on um, Illustrator or Photoshop and kind of like do a render. Drop in, right. Uh, Drop but, in. I, oh. but I have a bunch of templates on here that I just do renders usually. If it's just like an off-white Jordan 1 or if it's a Jordan 1, then I kind of just throw the textures on and he's like, here's generally what it'll look like. Yeah. And uh, more or less, it looks like this like that when it's done anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Um... Did I already ask you this? Do you have a mantra or motto that you live by? Uh, I don't think you asked me that, no. Um, not really. <laughs> I'm very go with the flow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not a big planner. Um, yeah. I really I like gonna... to just go head first. All right. And, uh, like figure bull. it out from there. Yeah. Because I, right. I, I think I have like lazy tendencies. So if I don't, if I sit there a little too long, I'll like just do nothing. <laughs> You think so? And I'll make excuses. I feel... I, I'm I'm big on that, yeah. Uh, really? Oh, I, I, because uh... I feel like you just told us, like, you make, like, 30 pairs a month, maybe, you know. I'm I'm uh, driven because of, like, this. But right. uh, t if you take this away, oh, like, I'll, I'll, I'll hit a hard Netflix for 15, uh, 15 uh... hours straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a normal funny. dude, honestly. <laughs> so question future if you all had like the resources and the time in the world that you don't have to think about like you know bills and stuff um what shoes would you make and for who what um, style i mean i think i would design my own sneaker i think i, I just i i re actually really like where i'm at right now um but i definitely would design my own all my own stuff which um i'm sure you know is extremely expensive um what, uh, head to toe like accessories i i really want to get into like apparel a little bit more and present that yeah um and just do a little bit of everything because like i have like like i want to make cars that'd be cool too Ooh, um, but like wow. there's like i don't think there's much of an intersection there with like streetwear and and uh motorsports just yet but i mean like i, I kind of want like a do-it-all company that kind of like does like fashion footwear marketing little tech i mean that's just like you know up in there the, in the like world. a moonshot yeah but i think like for for who i would do it for it, it would just be the people um i i i don't tend to like to make stuff for celebrities mm. um not that i haven't uh but they don't tend to like to pay for things <laughs> uh, and i think that like Even dilutes. They can, which yeah they're not... probably the people who who, who who can pay for it the most um, but yeah. I think, I think like for the longest time, like people have been artists, I'll say have been like really like starstruck by like celebrities. So they'll do something for them for free. And what that right. does is like it dilutes the, uh, the artist community into like, yeah. so then every celebrity thinks that like, okay, I have this many million followers. If I hit this guy so up, can, I'll get a free get shoe. Free. And yeah, I think that like, just no. like perpetuates like the, like the abuse of, um, artists and, and creatives. And I think, um, yeah, I've always hit uh, celebrities with a price. I think one guy, I, I don't really know what he did, but he was an influencer, I think, out of, like, somewhere in Europe, and he had, like, a couple million followers. And I remember he, like, hit me with this big thing that was like, yo, I have this many shoes, I do this, this many followers, this much engagement. He's like, what's your price? And I, 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 you know, I gave him my regular price, and he's like, but I have this many million followers. And I was like, well, okay, here's another 2,000. It costs this much more now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good for you. Good, good. I mean, someone has to do it. Yeah, I'm I, glad I, you are. I, I, you know? I get it, though. Like, I think I have the privilege. I can say no. I'm not like just dying for cash. And right. uh, but like, I, I see why people do it. You know, you, you need yeah. you, you feel but like, 
my, my message to like other artists and creatives is that like exposure does not put money on your table no, at all and at it doesn't all. put food in your mouth. So just, just right. keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're so good. Um, will you do anything differently? You think after the pandemic, like hug people? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, not really. Honestly, the pandemic hasn't really changed uh, the way I do things. It's, you know, I work from home. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that's changed is like some stores are closed, which suck. But uh, yeah. I think everything's turned so uh, uh, virtual and online. Like I get a lot mm -hmm. of materials online now. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of all my suppliers almost are all online. Uh, wow. Overseas. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that hasn't changed at all. Right. All right. Almost like, I mean, for you, maybe it was great that you got to come home and you kind of organized all your patterns and you're like set. And yeah. Ready. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's like one thing is like coming back from New York is uh, like, this is my home. And so coming yeah. back, like I, I have like a lot of vigor, I guess, like being inspired by like, you know, you have you, you've been to the farm uh, yes. and like your workshop as well. It's just like, okay, like this is what I should be doing over here. Um, yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, so I was going to ask if you would move to a different city, but I don't think you will. And I don't think you should. Um, <laughs> but you, I mean, you can always travel. and. I, I like I like where I'm at, where I like do like a couple months in a different city. Because like, right. you know, just being in Calgary by itself is, I think, a little narrow. Um, mm. So I kind of have like, right now, I'm I kind of living the life I, I want to be is like doing stints here. For yeah. a couple months, then coming back, doing this. But uh, Jack the Ripper is always, like, number one. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That'll be great if you can travel everywhere with it, like Japan, Europe, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all over. Oh, I'm looking forward. Um, I'm just going to be – so does it vary, like, to pair, pair it, you know, depending on the design, how long it takes? So how's what which style was the longest that you've taken to make? Uh I just finished a shoot, it took about a year, but it was like mostly because what? of uh um Rona and then traveling to New York. Right. Uh and then just not being happy with the turnout. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so you it just like you took a little long, but I, I redid it and then also it was like a full like design as well. So like I uh Hopefully, people will like it. I put a lot of effort into it. But uh, yeah, it, it was uh, a full design from the ground up, like a, uh, inspired by a few different things. But it was uh, oh, just cool. using the same soles, of course. I, it's hard yeah. to get brand new things of those. Yeah. Um, Is it not out yet? Or did you, no, did you already post it? Okay. Not so yet. One day we'll, the, we'll get the, to see it the, the owner has them. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, we still need to shoot them. Okay. So, yeah. Do not out usually... yet. Do you usually shoot the photos before you give it to the owner or? Yeah. Yeah. The owner um, uh, actually lives in my city. He's the like okay. one of one of like the only uh, Calgary clientele I have. Uh, but um, a mutual friend of ours is shooting them. So then I just handed them to him, delivered them. And then he's going to give it to the photographer. Great. Um, great. Shout out to Calby. Oh, okay. Uh, but right. usually, yeah, I shoot everything because it's like uh, I got to ship it out. So. Um, I usually shoot everything beforehand before I box it up and then I right. put it in the box, package it right. up and then get it out to go. There's actually a question from CD13. Unsure if this is asked, but was there ever a pair you made that you loved a lot that you didn't want to give? Um, that you're like, okay, maybe I need to make another pair to give to that. <laughs> yeah. Almost all of them. Yeah. yeah, I think it just goes back. Like I, 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 that's the thing with these shoes is I, I, I don't make them with like just the intent of like, do you, is this person gonna like it or are people gonna like it? It's like I always look through the lens of, do I like it? Because like right. I think that's like worked for You're me thus far. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not that's and not like to sound cocky, but like I think like I, I really trust my vision, and yeah. if I, 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 I quite like what I like and um you know I have um these shoes reflect that yeah so what do you do do you sometimes make like two pairs so you can keep one or no that won't happen uh no usually if I put online that there's like um you know 
eight pairs out there, then there's only eight pairs out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have like a secret one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Scouts honor. Got to keep that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many pairs do you own of your own creations that you're like? Uh, it's, it, it, it's going up now, but here's the thing. I, uh, I, I haven't been a sneakerhead for a while. Huh. Um, I kind of fell off of it and I'm like on okay. my feet too much. Uh, um, I'm at the gym what? or I'm running or uh-huh. doing something like that. So um, I usually just wear something that's easy. Uh, Chucks or Vans was like my uh-huh. go-to for, uh-huh. and it still is, let's be honest. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I don't really have the time ever to like slip on a pair of Jordans and uh-huh. and uh, put on a big outfit sometimes. So, uh, but nowadays yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put more effort into that. Yeah. Um, I think I have like three or four. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Three or four. And the one behind up. you, you were saying it's your personal pair. So is that yeah, your, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I haven't worn yeah. them yet. That's why they're on yeah. my table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and you, you might do something with it. You said. Yeah. The toe box oh. is just a bit off. So I'm probably going to take them apart. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess it's like something that you, you see it. Yeah. <sighs> no, I, I hear you. Thanks Raj. Yeah. What did I, I'm like. Is there any other questions that I I feel like I've asked to, a lot of like random little um, questions. Um, hold on, sorry, I'm looking at my question list. And you, you don't have your, you don't, yeah, you don't favor one or the other. So yeah, all right. I think I asked a lot of questions, but do you, are you gonna keep on working with Adidas a little bit or um, are you? Well... We'll see the way Rona, go <laughs> Rona goes, because uh, right now I'm not feeling confident about being back in New York City, but uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I Would feel you... good, but uh, hopefully, you know, I know a lot yeah. of companies are going through uh, budget cuts yeah. right now, yeah. so we'll see how it goes. Right. Yeah. I was wondering if you were able to work a little bit remotely. Not really. With them? No. Yeah. I, and, and you know, Eric, me and Eric are probably the only uh, people in the Makers. entire company who can, who have to be uh, at the farm at all times versus make... like everyone else is kind of like you, you, like not to downplay them at all at any no, sense, but right. like that you can, you can design on Photoshop on like a Cintiq or like now, like, you know, Gravity Sketch or whatever. Yeah. You can do that at home and send it in, do meetings on from home. But uh, yeah. To make Physical something, yeah, yeah it, it's it's really tough. Like I've done stuff uh, with them while I was back in Calgary, and it's a whole lot of like overnighting to them, right? And uh, yeah, can get uh, pretty pricey and sometimes really messy if they lose your stuff. Mm-mm-mm. Very cool, very cool. Do you still keep your like first ever pair? No, I I, I probably should have, but I'm a big uh, I'm a big throwawayer. Like when I move oh, on yeah. to new stuff, I just like piece yeah. uh and and like i think as an artist you look at you like stuff you've you've made in the past and you you kind of cringe <laughs> um uh for me it's like i think a little even in more intense or give me about like 12 hours and i'll look at it again and be like fuck i suck oh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i'll be like really so excited funny. at first and then like yeah i think like oh what did i do i did like a louis vuitton bag out of a louis vuitton towel it was mm. the first time I've like made like a like an accessory like that, and I was like, "Damn, this is so cool!" And then uh-huh. the next day, I was like, "Okay, I ain't shit." <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be good. Today. I feel like you're gonna like pat your back a little bit. Yeah, um, I should probably were... be doing that a little bit more. <laughs> and well, there's another question: Were the marble Air Easy ones pattern from an original pair? No, that was again like kind of like uh, I um <laughs> I had to look at Yeezys. <laughs> online yeah. and then i have a last uh and, and actually i have a, a, a post on my account of a last all taped up and i'm just drawing on it yeah. you know very old school style very cool yeah very uh cool. but that's the a good start is just taping on a last and then um, yeah. pulling that and off and then yeah. cutting that up and Make, yeah making it yeah yeah still do it to this day actually yeah yeah thanks yeah. so much yeah there's a question about where do you get your patterns and i think you make them yeah. Uh, yeah, I make all of them. You can buy yeah. them. I don't, um, uh, here's what I recommend to people, um, or in other makers is that like, if you can look at a pattern and, and go like, this is what I would do differently with it. 
uh, maybe don't buy that pattern because it's probably going to be like a couple hundred bucks. It's probably not going to be very right. cheap. Right. Um, ah, there's 10 so... seconds left. But <laughs> sorry, there's 10 seconds <laughs> no left. But you can do it from scratch is what you're saying. Yeah, just do it from yeah. scratch. 